centers? Or Tom interested? It's all yours, sir. Thank you. Press start. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How many turn between centers? One, two, two and a half, or three. <laughs> um, what started you doing centers instead of uh, using a mandrel or whatever? That's a good reason. You can turn bushing it turns between centers using bushings, but the way you do it with a caliper or something uh, is also a way. We'll discuss all those tonight. Uh, first thing we want to discuss is is what we just started is turning on a mandrel. The mandrel is easy to use if it's not bent. It's also easy to use because you can do two at once, two blanks at once. Whereas with turning between centers, you can only do one at once easily. I've seen people do it, but ugh, it scares me. Anyway, that is one way. Now then, there's two ways to use a mandrel. One is uh, with between this and the drive and a uh, uh, live, live center in the, in the tailstock and then run the point, which is, needs to be 60 degrees into the hole in the end. I don't know if you can see that or not. Oh, or not. Okay. Anyway, let's see if I can get it up. Okay, you can see the little hole on the end. That has a 60 degree hole, which is designed for maximum contact between the 60 degree live center and the innards of that, so it gives a solid grip. But you can get a better grip. Maybe. Using what they, I've, I've had good luck with, is the, is the a mandrel saver. With the pressure on the, using the other one, when you're pushing on the end, the, it, this happens with the, with the mandrel shaft. With this sliding over to the end, and turning freely in that, there's less pressure. You put the pressure on this rather than on the end. And it gives a much smoother run. Uh oh. And that gives it a, you, you know, you can't, it's, it's very tight. And it gives you a good solid op opportunity to uh, correct anything when you turn out of round. If the mandrel is bent, these are going to be out of round, all your blanks. And they're going to look funny. People are going to scrape their finger along the nib and they say, oh, there's extra wood on here, but there's not on this side. So this is, is one way of... Continuing to do if you already do. Um, um, if you want to continue using mandrels. Well. Now then the next route to go is using a spe special mandrels for um, turning between centers using your bushings. Penn State has a, a kit that this goes in tailstock and this is a, a live center. You put your bushings over the end of that and, and turn them that way. And the bushings keep it going if you want to use bushings. You know, sometimes some of those bushings or, or kits are hard to measure. Uh, this gives you an option of staying with the bushing as long as the bushing has not been sanded down, peeled off, or whatever. But those are very handy. Um, give you an idea, here's some bushings. 
and then the bushing just slide over that and then you put your black on it and opposite end as well I don't know if there's if you can well, we'll go over here but you can see the the bushing goes on the end and then this is the live center so it, it's another way to do it if you don't want to take the time using calipers and still turn to uh, uh, correct <laughs> the next way of doing it is using a dead center and a live center both with 60 degree points on them. The advantage of 60 degree is you can buy, I think I have some, well these are Delrin but for these are more for some another purpose but these you can buy metal uh, steel uh, precision drilled bushings that have the 60 degree dimple in them now when that goes on there it's solid you don't get any much play that way if you use a standard bushing it has just the, the regular flat hole with that one you have this much holding power all this is used touching something if you can you can turn between centers using regular bushings and put that on there but it's wobbly so and I've done it that way what I usually do when I do, do that is um, well I don't have anything is I turn for a while round it down to oh pretty close then I take this end and I rotate it counterclockwise a quarter to two-thirds of a quarter to half a turn on this side I rotate it clockwise holding the blank steady and it reduces the chance of an out around turning between centers could be anything from a small piece of wood to a baseball bat or if you got a lathe like John used to have, it could be a telephone pole. <laughs> so that's between centers. As long as you're turning normally with the grain, normally, and you're turning uh, inside turning, in other words. So this is a turn between center item. Um, well, anyway, this is what you would normally do to turn center. If you're going to make a, a maybe a handle, small handle, but a handle, you aren't going to use bushings normally. You aren't going to have a tube in it. So you need to turn it using some other type of drive center, something that will hold this and drive it and ride freely on here. I use step centers. I don't know if anybody has, else uses them. I love them because they're a good safety step center because they will slip if you get a catch. But that you would use centered on that and that to turn that round or whatever you design you're gonna put. Any questions? That's easy, good. Um, tonight, I would like to finish a blank using um, I'm gonna try some. I don't know if it'll work or not. I'm gonna do one end uh, without a bushing, one with a bushing. I'll use the drive center for the bushing end. Put that in, and put that in. The, just the tube. Caution. 
don't crank this thing super tight because <laughs> that bushing will expand. Or not the bushing, the tube will expand and you'll crack the line. So just enough to where it'll turn and not not be you know, not a catch on it or it won't impede the movement on it. I wish I'd brought a smaller. We'll go up. Okay, uh, to t turn this, I don't know what you use. You can use a, a skew. Use a, a round, easy wood. Use a square, easy wood. Or you can use a roughing gouge or you can use a in this case a, a deep sp uh, spindle gouge all those you can use to turn them um, I like prefer the roughing gouge because that to me is not only I get a cleaner cut but it's half a skew anyway if it's been bent it's round <laughs> So I'd like to take this one down, and then then I can do the uh, the finishing off on the uh, on the bushing side and the non-bushing side. One caution, when turning uh, blacks, I've seen people come in from the end to take it down, on, particularly on the bushing side. Please don't. Uh, it's the best way to get a chip out. I know. So stay with, uh, it's working to the ends from the center. I'm turning this end a quarter, a little over a quarter of a uh, turn. This end I won't have to because I don't have a bush in there. But that will save. See, it's pretty, pretty good. Okay, this kit is for a Wall Street. So this one, we don't know just where we should be. Hopefully, I haven't gone too far. Well, come on out. Okay, everybody have one of these? No? Anybody? Good. Measuring, which one are we on here? Here? We want to measure at this point the widest place of that component that's going in that hole. So this one on this end put it on here and it's going to be 
See if the other end's the same. That's a little bit over. Do you see it? Oh, here. here. <laughs> Going down. <laughs> so you can see that that one's uh, measures somewhere. There it is. There we go. Oops, slipped out. Okay, so this one and normally this is, they're both the same length. I'm surprised they're measured differently. Good reason to not trust bushings every time. Because this bushing measures zero it measures point five four hmm. I'm puzzled I don't know the answer but we'll find out anyway uh-huh That's what, uh, yeah. Which is what the the, the uh, nib measured that. Well, hmm, that's interesting. The what? Yeah, this is a two. Well, we will assume that we're going to take this one down to what we want it to be four seven, or a little more, because we're going to sand it when we're done, and we'll take some more wood off. So this one now measures five seven. So. As an alternate way is using a skew uh, to take this down to whatever measurements we want. I wish you would. <laughs> right. Take it just a thousand, two thousandths of an inch. Good, good, good yeah. This one now we'll want to take it down about a tenth, tenth of an inch. More. That's this is the bad part about turning about between centers without a bushing, is it back and forth to get it, but you can get it more precise because bushings change size from sanding this guy, whatever.
There we go. Perfect. Or so. Pretty close. It's close enough for what we're going to do. Especially use it thinking about what um, Lori said about uh, if you're going to put a finish on it. If you build a finish of, if you use Glue Boost, use five five coats. If you use some of the others, you can go up. I don't know how many coats you put on. Yours, yours are beautiful. I usually put between 12 and 15 at least, sometimes more. Uh, the, the other tools that I mentioned, if you use carbide on pins, which I don't know how many, anybody use carbide? Okay. Using the square carbide, you can use that straight in and you get a pretty rough finish. You can take it and turn it 45 and now it becomes, and at the right angle it becomes a skew. And you can smooth it out a lot from that. I wish I could get this thing a little closer, but it doesn't fit. And that's real smooth. The other tool is a round, which this one has, well, it doesn't have a negative rake. Uh, the danger of this one is for me is I tend to get to the end and I leave a dip from the round and that doesn't do well I don't like that this is not bad for smoothing the the the, the body but it's not for the ends for acrylics it's not bad especially if you have the negative rake one I thought I had one on this one but I don't but that does it reduces the negative rake reduces all the chatter on the acrylic, which is uh, I found to be a lot better, easier to use. All right. Any questions on that so far? Boy. Yes. The only ones you can get are easy wood tools. They are, have a copyright patent, whatever you do on a tool. Uh, Arizona Carbides, Ron Campbell, was, had them already made, and he found he, they got a letter from him that said, you aren't going to sell them. And so he's sold them now over in uh, England, I believe, to get rid of because he had, I don't know, ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 worth of them and uh, had to sell them off. All right, th all that's left of this really is the sanding and the finish and the assembly at this point. Sanding I use, uh, this is a sandpaper from uh, Wooden Wonders, I believe, Ken, Ken Rizza. And uh, I found that uh, some of the better sandpaper I've found to use. I have this size and smaller, and they're great for this because you can hold them and not watch them go whoop, halfway across the room. Uh, wood turning wonders, is that it? Ken Rizza is the person's, the guy that owns it. I'm sorry, I started out with, <coughs> started off with 120. Just, I wanted to get some of the ridges out there. I didn't clean them up as well as I normally do. One thing very important, whether it's wood or acrylic, is when you finish 
sanding it with a spinning. Take it all the way around and take the, the ridges out. Otherwise, you'll see rings. I'm sorry? No, but I'm lazy. <laughs> By the way, this wood is uh, Bethlehem olive wood. It's uh, one of my favorites to work with. Like that. Four hundred, six hundred. I got. It. Anyway, that's what there is to, to it. Any questions? Um, any questions on turning between centers in general? Uh, any reasons that you see that you might not want to do it or that you'd like to do it? I'm sorry? Yeah, you you li like that one? I think it's better than some of them I've seen. And I like it because I, I, there's a modification I do, and it's about a six inch piece, and it will spin the mandrel, but it will fit the end mirror, and I can just you know, put it between centers. I can turn it as long as I need to. That bushing that's in the headstock right now, you're going to have to buy another one of those for a different tube, right? This? Uh, for a different uh, pen, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is for the Wall Street, too. So is your caliper a number three caliper, or is it uh, a special number two? Let's see, how do you spell Harbor Freight? Harbor Freight, can you spell? <laughs> <laughs> One thing I didn't stress up front, and I think it's real important. One thing that you need to do before you do turn between centers is bring this guy up. And see how they come together. And that one's about it's a little bit off. So potentially that one we did could be a out around a little bit. Good idea to always recenter them. It's fun on the Sweet 16. <laughs> Ask me. <laughs> I ended up having to loosen bolts and take a hammer to knock it back in because there's not much to give, really. Now they're dead on. But if you don't have them this way, because you can see this one is, well, oh, you got it there, okay. So that one... Looking down on it, which is what we're doing. Uh, the one on the left is a little bit lower than the one on the right. 
And then, of course, you want to see it this way, too. Two different um, views of it. Depends on the lathe. Uh, depends on, like this one, we would probably adjust the feet on it to cause the, the bed to do this. Because if it's not up and down, uh, it's a little harder. Back and not meeting this way <laughs> is what those will control. Uh, this way, uh, might you probably might have to do a little adjustment to the tailstock. <laughs> And there's very little you can do. <laughs> you can adjust this this measurement, this adjust this um, control, if you want to call it that. It has some, some uh, cams in there that can be adjusted. But that's first thing you do on a lathe before you ever start turning between centers. Anything else I missed? A comment made on uh, on IAP by somebody, and I like it. it. Says you can play, use plain old mandrel bushings with 60 degree centers, and turn a barrel that appears to, appears to be centered. And that may actually be. However, in general, stock mandrel bushings can be sloppy. About three fourths of the way through a turning, like I said earlier, stop the lathe, turn the bushings clockwise, counterclockwise on the wood, which adjusts the wood, moves the wood this way or this way. And then, th and then I throw some salt over my shoulder, kiss my rabbit's foot. If I like the kit, I have a 60 degree TBC bushing that's made for me. Because <laughs> you can buy some that are dead on. Uh, the best person I've gotten them from is a person called Rick Harrell. He makes all kinds of things from great tool rests to bushings. Uh, one thing I didn't show tonight, and it just hit me because of what I just said. One of the things Rick Harrell makes is something that you can use. Use like this, but use your pointed centers. This is a, a, a adapter that you can put your regular bushing on here. It has a 60 degree divot, so it fits on there and it's got good contact on both sides. And then use your regular bushings and still be turning between centers. And you can make your adjustments if you want to. Also, he makes a bushing with a 60 degree um, divot on it. It was good contact, but it's set up for a seven millimeter slim line. So you don't have to have any anything else. This goes in the tube. There's your bushing is already built in. You can do slim lines all day with it. It's a great little tool. I've got Two of the adapters, which you'd need, and two of the seven millimeters. H e r r e l. H e r r e l. No, but they're precision. I mean, they are. They are no degree, no no measurement off. It turns on machine lathes. Another thing some people have done. I didn't bring them with me. How many use uh, center drills, center point drills? I've shown them before, several times. You can take a regular bushing, and if you're careful, and you put it in a collet chuck, which is the best centering chuck you can get. Put it in there and use those center bits. And you can actually drill these out for 60 degrees, which and they work well. A lot of people do it on I noticed on IAP over time. Um, I don't think I've missed anything. Another thing I forgot um, is these. I, I don't have them. I'm going to 
get them since I've learned they have them, is get carbide tip live and dead centers. Reason being is if you do it with just a bushing on there, the old flat bushing, over time as that spins it's going to put a ring in it. So if you drill it out, now it becomes the 60 degree mate to it and it won't leave the ring. I don't think there's anything. I think that's pretty much it. Handy thing you can use on your lathe. You saw, get old building foam. Put it, measure it to fit between the lathes steady. And it's great for laying stuff on, especially if you got a, a little bit larger lathe. Small lathes, you kind of run out of space. But I've gone through about five or six of these. I don't know. How many are members of IAP? International Associated Past Turners. Most everybody. It's a good article. 20, 14, 15 pages, I think it is. 14 on turning between centers. Written by oh, a guy that uh, went by Tex Durango, uh, George Butcher. He's no longer turning, but great article on turning between centers. Yeah. It's written, put to, that app was put together by a lives, uh, guy that lives over in the uh, Houston area, and uh, he's pretty swift. I like him. By the way, he just lost a daughter. Huh? Grandniece. Grandniece, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The end. Now go turn between centers.